Just my thoughts. I go by the name of Marcus G, and I got a special guest here. A guy I got a lot of respect for. My brother from another, Matt Graham, social justice activist, and a man of many titles. You know what I mean? We're gonna talk, uh, keeping on, uh, you know, uh, black male positive image. That's what we on today, Matt. What's going on, what's man? What's going on, bro? How's everything, everything going? Everything is everything, bro. It's great to see you. So, Good to see you too, man. You know, we just gonna get right into it. Um. I uh I have a lot of respect for what you do. Yeah. I seen that you was uh involved with the uh, MLK Center out in Long Island. Yeah. So um, you know from from how I know you with sports. Yeah. And now you're in the social social justice field, mm -hmm. not for profits. How how did that get going? How'd you get going with that? Well, I my if you looked at my resume, you it's really all over the place. Like mm -hmm. you know, I played football at Stony Brook University. I played football for about two years. Um. Decided to stop playing football. Um, started working in the music industry. Yeah. While I was working in the music industry, um, I, I first started off as an intern at Warner Music Group. Yeah. Um, doing basically at that time, I was selling ringtones, doing digital sales and marketing. Um, somehow swindled my way into an A and R role at Universal Motown. Mm -hmm. um, while I was doing that, I was, I was a senior in college, so I was sim simultaneously um, doing a lot of. Um, community organizing. I started mm -hmm. doing a lot of social justice work in college. Um, I was a part of the Stop and Frisk campaign um, with, with, with the Urban League, New York Urban League. And around then I realized that, you know, like I wanted to, I needed to do more work in the community. Yeah. I actually read a book called um, uh, Miseducation of the Negro, which was like mm. actually real pivotal to me because I, I learned a lot about like, you know, they say when you get rich, a lot of black folks, they get rich and move out the hood. Yeah. And, um, and that's really detrimental because it's like you don't have nobody giving you don't have nobody from the hood doing work in the community. Yeah. So, you know, like that was like one of the main reasons why I decided to um, move into like the social service um, lane. So I went from working into the music, working in the music industry to doing um, social services yeah. because at the time I didn't really know what a social justice job looked like. Yeah. So I started off as a foster care case planner um, while I was doing that. I actually. Um, I actually started a nonprofit um, in 2010 that connected foster youth with um, um, like young professionals in the entertainment industry. So, okay. say for example, if um, if I'm if I was interested in being a rapper, um, I would connect that that kid with uh, maybe a marketing manager or a lawyer in the entertainment industry, Dope. just so they could see the various career paths. And that was like my first introduction into like fundraising, nonprofit management. Um, I was also like, you know, like I was a social worker, so like I wanted to see like what it what it took to be an executive director or a CEO of a of a of an organization like that. Mm -hmm. So I basically worked my way backwards. Like I looked at the job description, looked to see like you know what does it take to be like what what kind of skills I need to possess to um, to be be at that level. Mm -hmm. So um, it was it was definitely a long role. I did a lot of. Um, I learned that you know, like one of the key aspects of being an executive director, being a nonprofit leader, was fundraising. Mm -hmm. So I did a, uh, I, t I d did a lot of volunteering initially, like writing grants for different organizations. I took on a lot of um, fundraising roles, and um, yeah, that basically um, really contribute contributed to uh, me being able to like you know possess the skills to be um, a, a executive director where mm -hmm. I'm at now. Um, I moved to Texas when I was living in Texas. I was still doing some social justice, I mean, social service work. Yeah. But I also um, started doing like a lot of nonprofit administrative work. And then um, while I, I actually came back to New York to um, get my master's in nonprofit leadership mm -hmm. from Fordham University. And mm -hmm. from there, I, did, I took on a role at I mentored doing fundraising. And then after that role, I actually became the executive director of Martin Luther King Center. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So, you know, um, Yo, that's that's all. That's amazing. It's like all, you said, you it's, said, all, it's all good though because uh, the the connection is the the connection. You know, we spoke about this a bit earlier, but from the music, you know, that's where a lot of us, you know, guys who like me and you, black yeah. guys, I feel like we um we all seem to go that route because yeah. it's you know you see people that look like you, yeah. you know, and you, you gravitate towards that. And the one the re one of the main reasons of why I started that organization was because. Like I would tell my kids, the kids I was working with, like, mm -hmm. you know, I used to work in the music industry. I met this person, I was actually recruiting artists and they were in like disbelief, like, whoa, how did you, like you was in the music industry and yeah. now you're here? Like, how did you get there? Like, and I'm like, yeah, it looks so, good like, to them. And then it's like, the thing is like, they thought it was like so out of reach because they, you know, like they did, like when they think about like, like the kids I was talking to, when they thought about the music industry or the entertainment industry, they thought that, 
you know, the only way to make it was to be an entertainer, but mm -hmm. they didn't really see like the other avenues. Yes. So. Yeah. And, and I spent some time in the music business and I think, um, you know, I came in as a person who uh, was so gung ho on being an artist. Like yeah. I wanted to be a superstar. That's how I seen it. I got bars for days. Everybody got to pay attention to me. Eventually I learned, okay, this is about business, you know? Yeah. Um, and that's sometimes, you know, you learn that's not for everybody. Some oh, people yeah. are true to the game. They want to be artists. They like the art. And some people, you know, they have the talent and the mind and the wherewithal to be able to capitalize mm -hmm. and monetize off of that um along the way uh you know i picked up a skill got the camera work going yeah. and that was when i my mind got open mm -hmm. to uh just all the possibilities outside of being the man uh front line yes yeah, exactly. you know um and also behind the scenes i met a lot of dope people like yourself yeah. who uh who really uh inspired me to become more of a curator and more of a teacher because I feel like when I'm dealing with film I'm, I'm teaching as well like I'm showing the other side to it that uh you know sometimes when you're in front of the camera you don't see that so along your way like who did you did you meet anybody that really like who, who mentored you who inspired you who who was able to put give you some game put some some jewels in your mind I feel like um Another inf influential book of mine was um, the autobi autobiography of Malcolm X. Yeah, love so, it. So, like, I feel like um, he was, I would definitely say he was one of my mentors, something that someone I looked up to, someone that, like, you really instilled in me to give back, in, to, give back to my community. Mm -hmm. um, but, like, when I was, uh, like, you know, when I got into social services and when I was starting, when I started my nonprofit, I actually... Um, started. This is something I picked up in the entertainment industry. I started like reaching out to various executive directors, various CEOs mm -hmm. of like the top nonprofits around the city, and you know, like I got I got a lot of, like responses back because because I was um you know like I was hitting them up to do informational interviews to see like what it took for them to get to their their role. Yeah. And you know, I made a lot of great connections. Um, one of the one of the key connections I made was with a, a gentleman. His name was Rich Bury. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, he's the at the time he was actually the executive director of the Children Aid Society. Yeah. Um, and now he's actually the CEO of the Robin Hood Foundation, which is the biggest foundation. One, well, definitely the biggest foundation in the city, but like one of the biggest foundations in the country. Mm. And um, like he was def he was definitely um, the connection I made with him was definitely. Um, very pivotal in, in in regards to like you know me making the decision to um like pursue my master's in nonprofit leadership yeah. to um um like just learn more about like what it took to be an executive director yeah so um but other than that like I feel like you know I had um in the community like of, co of course my pops but like you know like um I didn't really have a lot of mentors and it was mm -hmm. also on myself like I really didn't reach out I should have reached out to a lot of folks but I really didn't mm -hmm. um, I'm also in a fraternity and um, I should like I have I have a lot of mentors in, the, in my fraternity mm -hmm. but you know like as a young kid I really didn't reach out to I didn't do my best to reach out mm -hmm. as I should have so um, that's one thing I wish I could um, actually um, if I could go back, I would I would definitely um, reach out to some of those folks because you know like if you have a mentor, it's almost like having a cheat sheet to life. Yes. and I could have avoided a, a lot of the bullshit I, I yeah, had to yeah. do it. Yeah, um, growing up. I mean, I'm still growing up, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear that. I hear that. Yeah. Um, you know, I love I love that you, you mentioned your father because yeah. um, even with what you're involved in, and uh, this is going to get a little a little deep. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because your father's a police officer. Exactly, and I was about to say that. Like, mm -hmm. uh, he's a he's a police officer, and I'm over here preaching about shit abolishing the police. Yeah, yeah. So like, but like, I feel like you know, like he understands where I'm coming. He understands where I'm coming from because it's like you know, when I when I talk about defunding the police, when I talk about abolishing the police, I don't talk. I'm not talking about like getting rid of t the cops tomorrow. Yeah. I'm talking about like you know reinvesting. Like right now, the, the NYPD budget is bigger than the Ukrainian military's budget. Crazy. So like you know, like right now, I'm talking about like you know, reallocating some of that funding to the community, to yeah. social service um, organizations in the community, to mm -hmm. mental health services, to housing services in the community, to alle alleviate some of the issues that the police is dealing. With. For sure, for sure. I think um, you know it's funny when people hear things like uh, abolish the police right they just think like oh just, if you just get rid of them all the problems gonna yeah. go away but i'm big on even in my own life i think uh you know policing yourself yeah exactly taking more responsibility for yourself because that's usually what it comes with like mm -hmm. we as a uh, neighbors you know we grew up on this block it's like yeah. i got if i'm doing my job i gotta look out for you you gotta look out for me and that's how we all grow yeah. so i think that's a cool like uh, uh dynamic that uh you have right there because yeah. you know uh, and i actually saw like you know growing up i got out of a lot of 
bullshit because my pops was a cop. Yeah. So it could have been it could have went bad for me a lot of times, but um, like I I think I have a unique perspective because he's a police officer. Mm -hmm. I saw I see the good in it, mm -hmm. but also like you know like I also have that social justice lens where I'm like, like y'all y'all really y'all really have RoboCop dogs while we while we have nurses in. Dealing mm -hmm. with COVID, wearing trash bags, yeah, because we don't have money to give to nurses, or you have teachers buying, spending their own money on teaching equipment. Mm -hmm. I hear that. So, what's so? Um, what's been your dad's perspective on that? What does he? What does he think about all this? All, all the stuff I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, mean not, not even necessarily what you're doing. I mean, yeah, what you're doing. All and, my thoughts. Or yeah, and his thoughts on what he sees as far as the general public sometimes and their perspective because i think yeah. me knowing your father i think he's a good man yeah you know and i i don't i mean i wasn't there for his every time yeah. he was on shift but it's like I, I think that me knowing him it also reminds me like there are great people and i know a few people who are police yeah, exactly. officers and i think like they're genuine people who want to do a good job and oh, yeah. want to look out for the next person so what is what is his, his perspective on all of that i want to i want to take words out of his mouth mm -hmm. but from what like from the conversations I've had with him, he's very supportive of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, he understands he's a black man himself. Yeah, he's been in a he, he he retired. He's a retired cop, so you know he he dealt with like racism himself. Yeah, like internally working as a police officer, a black police officer. Mm -hmm. So I, I know he had to deal with a lot, and um, I feel like you know like he he um, he definitely understands like um, that direction I'm going to um, my beliefs. Yeah, um, because you know like at the end of the day it's really common sense. Like you know like if if a guy shoots somebody and he doesn't have a gun, or if, um, maybe he should should face some sort of consequences. For sure. Like so like you know it's a lot of the stuff I preach in regards to like um, police transparency, mm -hmm. um, defunding the police is really common sense. Yeah. Um, and I think he does get that. I mean I, I'm not gonna lie. Like I feel like um, as far as like the defunding the police thing, you know like a lot you know like um, I don't want to say he's against it because um, I really don't know his. I really totally don't know his perspective on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like, you know, that the NYPD helped me growing up. For so sure. like, that's why I said like, you know, like I have that skewed view. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I feel like a lot of the stuff I preach is really common sense. Mm -hmm. You know what? I don't want to say it's a, even a, a skewed view. I think you have more of a well-rounded view. Yeah. Because um, even when, um, let's look at like a, uh, in, in general, like you and I, like I mentioned off camera, yeah. like fatherhood. Fatherhood is kind of like a policing. Oh, hell yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And as I've grown older, I see where my pops put certain boundaries oh, yeah. in front of me. So that way, as an adult, you know, we men. So it's like, we want to do whatever we want to yeah. do. But when you have those boundaries in your mind, you know, you, you tend to move a little bit smarter. You oh, move, yeah. You move with a bit more caution. You're more tactical. Yeah. And I think sometimes amongst my, our peers, um, Guys that look like you and I, yeah. uh, maybe share similar stories, definitely share the same likeness. I think sometimes we don't uh, appreciate those boundaries. Yeah. And, and honestly, like like you said, like growing up, like, I, you know, like we was talking about earlier, like, you know, you would think it's strict and, you know, you'll be a little defiant growing mm -hmm. up and you start appreciating all the boundaries like your pops and my pops put in place because mm -hmm. you know they're protect they're protecting you mm -hmm. um, because they know like they've been around the block they yeah. see how things could get and to be honest i wouldn't be the person i am today if it wasn't for my pops so like i'm definitely very appreciate yeah. appreciative of them yeah, yeah i like that i like that um here's another point that i this is this is what really like sparked my interest yeah. to, to talk to you when um you know the mayor. He said. Oh, uh, <laughs> he says. Uh, and you know it's funny because they actually had a meeting and all that yeah, since yeah, then. Yeah. Him, Mayno, Fabio, Foreign, or whatever the the guys are uh, kind of leading that drill movement. Yeah, His yeah. thoughts were: uh, if we take the drill music away, that stops the the violence. First, really? the, ah, with this mayor, uh, I feel like you know now, like like I didn't even really want him to be a mayor to begin with because mm -hmm. like you know his like he's getting. He's getting funded by the PBA. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's also a former cop. Um, I have nothing. I have nothing against cops, but like you know, his views is like you know, like bring back solitary confinement, like give more money to the police. Um, and it's like he's very pro police, very like disconnected from the community. So mm -hmm. when he said that, it, he he could have been basically like Trump saying some shit like that. Yeah. Like, that shit was wild, crazy to me. Yeah, and I, and um, even as you're speaking, and this is why I like you know speaking to guys of your your cloth. Because I'm so ignorant of politics. Yeah, you know. Now, I, I mean, I, shit. I mean, 
luckily we have social media and that's yeah. one thing like i, I want to do more like i want to be able to develop like political like toolkits so people mm-hmm. could start like you know like because i honestly like local elections like city council members and shit like that that's more Im- impactful for us as opposed to like you know the federal yeah g- elected officials so like um like that's something I, I need to do like a better job at as mm-hmm. well. Well, I mean, I think you're more well versed than most. You're more, more well versed than me, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. Um, my thing is, um, I can't stand that as I get older because I've been, you know, programmed. And luckily, like I said, shout out to my dad because I have a guy who puts certain thoughts in my mind. But I see that I'm programmed sports, drugs, entertainment. Yeah. So most things outside of that, I'm just like. I only pay attention on the social sphere when I look at my peers. I'm like, oh, well, that's where you got that from? Nah, yeah. I don't know about that. Like, yeah. So in your perspective, because you are involved, like, what, what do you think it'll take to... Because I think as a people, we, we don't do things until it's cool. Yeah, exactly. Like, it got to look cool. Or you got to see somebody who you, you know, like I told you earlier, uh, has the tangible... You know, yeah. you, might, you might need to see a guy with a nice car yeah. that is a... Uh, preaching or mm-hmm. or kicking that message so what do you think um can help as far as like just getting that awareness out and making that a thing that uh we pay attention to and even talk about in our social circles on the regular i feel like for one like you know following like following like different organizations even on social media like you know i i try to stay all, i mean i try to do like we a all digital try. detox we all like, try yeah you know like it really depends on like who you following. Like if you following like people that's promoting good content, like um like I'm part of Justice League NYC, mm-hmm. um gathering for the justice. They always like promoting like or even like CPR, which is a community for police reform mm-hmm. organizations. They they promote all, they pr- basically promote like content so it's easily digestible for anybody to understand what's going on. Mm. So like you know looking for organizations like that, like to follow and just like, you know, just so you're on top of like what's going on in like the common, um, current events. Um, like say for example, with the whole, um, the mayor situation, I don't watch TV, like mm-hmm. all that stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm getting from social media. Yeah. So, um, you know, like it's really important to like, you know, make sure you're following the right people on social media, or right organizations. Hmm. Also like making sure you're following different organizations because you don't want just one point of view. Yes. So um, I feel like, you know, like using social media as a tool for the good, I think is, is it definitely helped me. Mm-hmm. Um, also like with me, um, just getting involved. Um, and when I say like, you know, getting involved in like this movement, like I, I've been I've been in this movement really since like 2016. Mm-hmm. It, it didn't really get cool until like 2020 with the yeah. whole uprisings. But like I, I've been out there protesting in the streets for a minute. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, like by me just getting involved with organizations, being on like those weekly calls and like just being around folks that's like, you know, sharing just like positive messaging, mm-hmm. um, I felt like, you know, that was very influ- that was very impactful and be- very um, vital for me just to yeah. be aware of like what's going on in the community. Um, and, you know, like when I say like being involved in like this movement, like, you know, everyone, everyone has this different role. Like I'm, I'm an introvert. Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah, like I, I work behind the scenes. I'm more of a, strate- uh, like a strategist. Yes. Like I'm not going to be outside, like, like, speaking and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, just knowing like what role you're playing, yeah. like you can easily by simply sharing information online, you helping one person know know something that they didn't know. For sure. So like just knowing like what your role is in in this movement, and I feel like you know everybody has a role. Mm-hmm. De- definitely, definitely true. Um, I want to take it back to something you said earlier, um, just about your experience um, in the music industry, mm-hmm. right? Uh, this is something you know, I, and I, I <laughs> it sucks because like I never want to. I like. I've met great people, mm-hmm. a part of it, and I, I don't want to like question their character. Yeah. But um, and and I don't even sometimes think it's a matter of characters. Like people, you know, there there are people that are trying to push certain narratives, yeah. and you know, it's a big machine, mm-hmm. right? Um, in your experience, um, what was it about it that made you? Because you were in a position where yeah. a lot of people, even myself, maybe a few years ago, I'd been like, "Man, why'd you leave that? Why'd yeah, you do exactly. that?" Hell and, yeah. and I know when I left, people were like, "Well, why? Why'd you do that?" Yeah. Um, Hell yeah. What What was it that um, that is? What was it that you seen or noticed that um, made you want to, uh, you know, just take step back from that 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 arena? 
Um, I feel like it was a multi. It was a lot of a lot of shit. Like I was a at that time I was a like recruiting artist, mm-hmm. and this is like I want to say back in 20, 2009, 2010. So like a lot of the content wasn't really you. We really like that conscious rap. That conscious stuff was wasn't really resonating to mm-hmm. the community. So a lot of the music that like I was recruiting, looking for was like about sex, money, drugs, and that's all it was. Mm-hmm. And like a lot of shit was really really draining. But it's it's crazy because at that time I was also in college. Mm-hmm. So like um I was also a kid myself. So yeah. like you know like a lot of the stuff it was it was attractive. Like I love being able to go to these events for free, get bottle service and yes. stuff like that. I love it but, too. <laughs> yeah, but like at the same time I like in retrospect I, I told myself like you know I can't be I'm not going to be doing I don't, I I don't see myself doing this. At 40 mm-hmm. and I wanted something that I could see myself like something with longevity mm-hmm. um, working in the entertainment industry is, is very cutthroat it's very um it's a young man's game yeah, yeah and like you know like if you don't if you don't find somebody quick like you you out yeah and I feel like you know like it was a multiple it was a lot of stuff but it was also very draining like yeah. it got to a point where like it was draining to come to work mm-hmm. and um and I and you know like and like I said before I also started doing a lot of um like reading, community organizing, and I realized that, like you know, like what am I doing to be more impactful to the community? Mm-hmm. Um, if I could go back, I would have um, probably tried to get a mentor in the music industry, mm-hmm. like when you was talking about mentors. Yeah. But like you know, at that time I was a young kid, so I'm like you know, let me just let me just try to figure. I mean, do it my out. thing, yeah, yeah. 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 But like like I wish I could have like probably spoke to somebody to see like you know what could I do to be more of a impact to have more of a social impact yeah um i probably could have started like a uh like i think they have this now but like maybe a social impact organization or like a social impact division in the yeah. music industry where we're actually providing funding or giving donations to like organizations in the community mm-hmm. and um like but who, who, who knows <laughs> who knows yeah who knows yeah what um because you know as i said off camera um just the work that you're into and that's what all of this is inspired by. Yeah. Um, I think, um, not even I think, what, why do you think we allow ourselves, and I guess maybe, maybe I should say I think of, in my opinion, mm-hmm. I think we allow ourselves to get pigeonholed, Yeah. right? Um, I just told you, like, I have interest in getting my CDL. Yeah. And, that, and the reason was because I got a... I mean, I got on YouTube a few years ago and I see a bunch of black guys. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is great. Like, this is something that's different. I don't know about yeah. it. I see you guys doing well, people mm-hmm. that look like me. Why do you think, and uh, I feel like some of the books you mentioned definitely probably taught you the answer, yeah. but uh, why do you think we allow ourselves to get pigeonholed um, and that we don't uh, step out um, to even like the behind the scenes work? Learning, be uh, being more uh, business orientated, having yeah. that business acumen. Why do you think we we, yeah? Why do you think we get boxed in like that? I feel like it's definitely just lack of exposure. Because mm-hmm. um, I feel like you know once you're exposed to something, like it's easy to gravitate towards it. But like just the lack of exposure, like a lot of the stuff I learned um, was in college. Yeah. And um, I, I don't know why I learned in high school, but like a lot of the stuff I learned was from college, and like a lot of the friends I made were from college that was was also like very influential with me like like being like you know like I can't be lacking because I like my dude's over here he's he's executive I'm like you know I gotta work my way up too mm-hmm. so like it's also about like who's in your circle like making sure you're curating your inner, inner circle mm-hmm. um, I feel like that's also like something that we we need to do a better job at me even me um, just making sure like you like you always like assessing like who's in your circle you always like exposing yourself to like um more things true and um honestly like as a community i feel like we're unfortunately like a lot of the stuff we have to do on our own because it's like you know we just like it's just a lack of resources in the community Mm -hmm. but um luckily now we have youtube we have podcasts we have like different resources where it's like you know right now everything is virtual Mm -hmm. so i could go i could learn how to like do cybersecurity online now for like ten dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of the stuff is at our fingertips now, so I feel like right now we're we're definitely in a better position. But like um, growing up, we didn't have all this, um, res- all these resources at our fingertips. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think um, right now it's a it's definitely a different time. Mm-hmm. But like you know, like prior to that, like yeah, it was, it was definitely a lack of exposure. I would say. Okay, I agree. I agree. 
Um, and I'm throwing some ignorance there yeah. on behalf of myself. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to speak for anybody yeah. else uh, because I see, think sometimes uh, we have a tendency to, uh, you know, monkey see, monkey do. Yeah, exactly. You know, monkey see, monkey do. Even, you know, myself, like I mentioned, I love hip hop. I love mm -hmm. making music, right? But, you know, I'm 30 now. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, at this point, age doesn't even really matter yeah, when it, it comes to, yeah. to, to the art. To the art, yeah, mm -hmm. it doesn't even matter. But I do know that it's like, um, you know, where can I be more effective? Yeah, exactly. You know, that where, where can I be more effective? That's really, really where, where my mind is. Where mm -hmm. am I going to make more of an impact at? Yeah. And I find, like, great joy in doing this and having these conversations. Yeah. Um, That's actually why one of the reasons why I actually um, became an executive director. Because mm -hmm. I felt like, you know... Um, when I was doing like that direct service work, I felt like I was like basically putting a small bandage over a large wound and mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to make that macro impact mm -hmm. and be able to like develop programs and like, you know, um, basically like, like go to the source of what, what was causing the problems and change that. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, that like, I do appreciate you even saying that. Yeah. When, um, all right. Man, this, this is a good conversation. So <laughs> so check it. When I see, this is my thing, like even back to, let's step back to the, the political yeah, the yeah. political realm, right? This is what I notice. Um, I'm not paying attention until Cardi B is on the screen yeah. with Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. Or Cardi B is talking about it with Charlamagne. Or Charlamagne is talking to Kamala. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's actually, and the funny, I, I like, I really do appreciate the Breakfast Club, too, because mm -hmm. they always, on the front lines, like, being able to promote, like, content like that in a mm -hmm. digestible manner for us to know, mm -hmm. know about, like, what's going on. Now, and I'm not, uh, see, when it comes to that, I don't even have, like, a... Uh, I don't even pick a side because once again, I don't even do enough homework to yeah. pick a side. Sometimes, I, yeah, bottom line, I don't do enough homework. But would you do you think sometimes it's um the direction is making uh is skewed towards one way? Because for instance, I'm not saying yeah. I don't want to be on camera talking about <laughs> the Republican Democrat because yeah. I'm. But there's always two sides to the coin. Oh yeah, yeah. So sometimes to me, it comes across like. I'm being fed to go in one direction. I mean, but it's also like if you look at social media, it's all about the ag algorithms. Mm -hmm. And like, like say for example, during like the 2020 uprisings, like I'm looking on my feed and I have nothing but like Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. Like it's all about like who you're following. It's, it's clickbait. Yeah. And it's crazy because at that time, you know, I live in Staten Island. Mm -hmm. I actually had to block people. I had to unfriend people because they were being trolls under my like under the stuff I was involved with. Yeah. So um, I feel like, you know, like it's it's hard because it, it, even now, like I feel like with the whole like there's like I'm not I'm not, I'm a Democrat, but at the same time, it's like there's policies that I don't agree with. Yeah. So that's why I always say like it's so important to like be aware of like local politics as mm -hmm. well because that's that's really what's um what affects us. Yeah. And um it's all about like doing the homework and like honestly like that's a lot of homework. So that's like, a lot of homework. <laughs> so like yeah. um, being able to find resources where like they're promoting it in a di digestible manner, like finding toolkits where it's like, okay, this guy don't like black people, all right. Mm -hmm. Like cross them out like yeah you know like and there's resources out there like that so mm -hmm. my question to you is uh especially since you read like uh like the autobiography of malcolm x yeah like um you know not I, I think you know he expounds on the reason a lot but like what do you think the reason is why isn't it promoted heavily i mean like i said before i, I feel like a lot of this stuff is systematic. Mm -hmm. It's like put in place for a reason. Yeah. Um, and we we're starting to see that. You yeah. Know? Um, say for example, right now I work in nonprofit. I'm a nonprofit executive. Mm -hmm. um, I focus on fundraising, mm -hmm. and a lot of philanthropy was for a long time colonized um, to the point where it's like you know when you look at foundations, um, only out of all the foundations, I want to say like two percent of all resources was sent to. Um, organizations led by people of color. Interesting. Um, so, like you know, like when you think about stuff like that, it's it's, it's a system and it's working. Yeah. Um, and it's put in place for a reason to keep certain folks that look like a certain way down. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing that in uh, in uh, 2022 we still go through those things. So, look, I also have this. Would you say? 
I, I have this discussion with my boy all the time, like, um, because I play devil's advocate. Yeah. Part of this is because I think, and I, I, I know that I had somebody, like, I had both my parents mm-hmm. that, like, really empowered me in certain ways. Um, but I don't like using the word oppressed mm. when it comes to us, man. Yeah. Because I think that on one side, it's true. Yeah. To a degree, like when you mentioned, um, as far as like where budgeting goes into oh, yeah. philanthropy. But then on the other side, I find that people use it as a crutch. Oh yeah, and, and like I said, and like I said before, like we're blessed to be in this atmosphere now where everything is digital. Like mm-hmm. if you want to, like there's no reason why you can't make um, like a hundred k on your couch now. Like yeah. you, there's resources to teach you how to do that mm-hmm. at your fingertips. Yeah, yeah, and, that, and that's a. Uh, yeah, I just, I just, I just have a, and that's another thing where it's dope, like we having this conversation, because um, I really want to get out of that mindset mm-hmm. because I find that I find myself there. Like years ago, when yeah. I got a little bit conscious, my mom used to, she used to laugh at me, right upstairs. She used yeah, to yeah. laugh at me. She used to say, "I'm gonna let you go through that." Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. I think it's just a phase. Um, you know, and not not that you you're not using that. You're more taking action on it. Mm-hmm. But we use that as an excuse. Well, because I'm black, mm-hmm. uh, and and I, I try to I try to stay away from that because I I notice sometimes that, and this is also me playing devil's advocate too. Mm-hmm. Like, because I've been there before. I think sometimes, and it could be a, a long, deep rooted mm-hmm. thing. My boy always tells me that too. But like, we choose this. Yeah, exactly. Some people make these choices. Um, you choose to to uh, not maximize your potential, mm-hmm. not go after these ideas. It's even similar to um, when uh, you know, just you know, both of our experience in the music industry. It took me a long time to say, okay, like I can do other things besides mm-hmm. rap. Yeah, I don't just have to be the. I don't want to call rappers a guinea pig or a yeah. puppet, but it's like, hey, there's so much things going on to make that image look the way. Yeah. Uh, people see it and for people to buy into it yeah. that um you know you people um yeah once again I find that's a way that you get pigeonholed oh yeah and I think sometimes we allow ourselves to do that yeah and I think it's also you know just lack of discipline as mm-hmm. well um because like you know growing up like like I said before I I had I had to go through bullshit um, mm-hmm. I came a long way from where I was shit five years ago. Yeah. And it's all about like self discipline, forcing yourself like reading isn't fun, but like, mm-hmm. you know, forcing yourself to listen to audiobooks, mm-hmm. um, for, forcing yourself to take a class, forcing yourself to get up to have a regiment where you know you're like you're doing you're working out, you're doing like you're learning, you're making money, you're st- staying active. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, it's um that's something that's crucial and, and um I feel like in our community it's it's just um, you know, like we're doing a lot and it's sometimes we're not we're forced to work and it's like we don't have the opportunity to like learn because it's like you know you're we're basically like I can't I can't take this class because I'm, I'm going to work right yeah. now. yeah and then um, so like you know it's, it's just um, about being disciplined and forcing yourself to do some of these things I thought true uh, my last thought before we wrap up especially because you're a sports guy this is another uh, <laughs> you know you probably know my mother go with this um, the the uh, you know, social, I guess, social politics and sports, mm. right? Colin Kaepernick. And shout out to Colin, because yeah. I definitely, I respect it. Yeah. I I always try to, like, look at things from both sides. I never really pick a side. I never pick a side until I have all, you know, the facts. I need to watch his documentary on Netflix, though. Oh, that's it. Yeah, it's dope. Because um, I heard some good things about it, yeah. and I heard that it was really insightful. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about... The social politics entering sports. I feel like they have a platform where they need to put like they they have to use their platform and mm-hmm. and they've been using their platform for years. Like if you think about the Olympics, I forgot what year that was when um when they when the the the, the two runners put up the black um mm-hmm. power fist. Yeah, like you know like they're using their platform for a reason to get um to raise awareness. Yeah, and I feel like that's crucial. And when you have um, individuals and you have companies going against them raising awareness like that, yeah. that shows you a lot about that industry they're in. True. So, you know, like, I feel like, you know, that was actually like a slap in the face to the, even to this day that he's, he's still jobless. Mm-hmm. Um, like, they, they saying that they're doing all this, this work 
to like give back to the community, but they're still blackballing. True. Um, and yeah, it's, yeah, I, I was always like for him like when he did that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, you know, I, to me it was like common sense. Mm -hmm. I didn't see anything wrong with him kneeling. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was disrespectful because he said, like, you know, like this was around the yeah. time when um, like the Eric Garner. Yes. Um, th yeah. It was Eric Garner. Yeah, it was Eric Garner, um, Mike Brown, yes. Trayvon Martin, all this stuff, stuff was happening back to back to back. Yeah. And, um, you know, like people got fed up. Mm -hmm. So like for people to um, get offended by him raising awareness of that about like the police brutality mm -hmm. about the the systematic racism in this country like you know that shows a lot about those people true and i'm a, I, I i like that you said that and that kind of like sways my opinion even more to you know yeah. your, your side of the fence for sure because i'm always one to say like um we dominate every industry. Like they use our image. We got the swagger for it. We got the, the they vernacular. Moved the, we the, moved the culture. We moved the whole thing. But the problem is, and that's why I like, as you see, a lot of this, like I do it myself. Yeah, like, yeah. and I'm gonna do as much as I can myself because we don't own it. Exactly. That's a huge problem. Now, granted, those are big machines that's gonna be here when we go. Yeah. They gonna be here. But like, imagine you know? if all the black NFL players went and. Just said like, you know, fuck it, I'm not coming to work tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, the thing is, it's interesting that you even say that because maybe some people, and this is where I think even Malcolm X, like, that's why I, I, I really, Malcolm yeah. X was yeah. so <laughs> real because the thing is that maybe if people did do that, maybe then the next crop would just fill their shoes and it yeah. would just continue. Like, that was like where that whole civil rights movement was where it's like, yo, we got to yeah. step back from that stuff, like, because we feeding the beast yeah. by by playing the game, by even joining in on that. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like you put your work in, you want to get your money. Yeah. People feed, got to feed their families. Got to feed your families. Yeah. So it's a, it's a double-edged sword with that. But um, yeah, I'm always one for, you know, do as much as you can yeah. amongst a small circle, your friends, expand it, yeah. stay focused. Um, and kind of like, I mean, um, rest in peace, I, rapper, but I think the the... The idea is like crucial. It's yeah. like the Nipsey Hustle approach. Oh, yeah. We're gonna do all that we can yeah. for ourselves mm -hmm. until you know we want to expand. But yeah. by then we got the numbers for it. So oh, it's yeah. like you can't even take this from me. Yeah. But with, with that whole NFL situation, I could like I could I could definitely see what you're saying with the whole situation with like you know like that's like me going into work. Mm -hmm. I have to work to feed my family. I can't like I'm used to making this amount of money like if I leave this role like I'm not going to be able to find a job like this yes so like I can see why people were reluctant to like support him but mm -hmm. at the same time it's like it's one of those things that's ingrained in you like you're not gonna like you know like it's I don't know it's it's one of those situations where you know like it's a lot of, it, like I give Ka Kaepernick a lot of gratitude because he made that sacrifice yeah he knew what he was doing yeah and um and I feel like you know like if like, you know, the NFL made an example of him. And mm -hmm. I feel like at the end of the day, it's like, it's one of those situations where it's like, you know, like, I could see where people are coming from, but at the same time, it's like, you know, you, you, you got to respect what he's doing. For sure. No, 100%, because um, even just like the, I'm big on sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And I can say, just as a man, I know that had to hurt. Hell yeah. I know that had to hurt, because even me, when I be doing... I don't even got millions of dollars on yeah. the line. I'd be like, damn, I'm about to lose out a little bit. Uh, yeah. It's got to hurt. So I definitely, um, you know, I appreciate your perspective on that. And I think a lot of other people got blackballed too. I'm trying to think. There was a safety from, uh, I forgot his name, that was also kneeling. That was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I forget the name, but I, I yeah. think he was along the, the, along the list of people who did get blackballed. Yeah. And it's funny because, um, and that's where it sucks, where we get tricky as a people because then you watch teammates kind of annex them yeah exactly it's like, nah, i'm not even yeah i'm not fucking with that man <laughs> you know what i mean i gotta, I gotta go god please massive you, you know that <laughs> like hey that's what it turns into but then at the same time like i said going back to hey i gotta feed my family too yeah, exactly so you run it you just run that risk i'm just uh you know i always you know i'm definitely I, i'm gonna go watch that Colin kaepernick people yeah, want me to yeah, watch yeah. the kanye documentary i'm gonna watch that Colin kaepernick yeah. documentary now kanye yeah. documentary is dope too though yeah like, that's, it's that, that's definitely something for like entrepreneurs mm -hmm. to watch like i actually just finished it you know even 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 i guess we can even touch on that because uh you know i think you're a stylist dude like right kanye 
I like that Kanye um, is very forward. Yeah, I don't yeah. agree with everything, but I can imagine when you're trying to do things and you do have the ability to do it, mm -hmm. and you realize people are stopping you just because yeah. the color of your skin. Sometimes it's just like it's like that. He had that whole thing with the fashion industry, oh, yeah. like that was his whole his whole beef. And yeah. I know a lot of his story, so I didn't watch the documentary, but yeah. I know a lot of his story, and I know that you know to. He was not believed in for a long time oh, yeah. as to be who he is now. Yeah. You know, he had that belief in himself. Like it takes mm -hmm. you. You have to be real narcissistic to say like, "Hey, I'm gonna do a documentary on my life right mm -hmm. now," and and it's gonna be something yeah. later. <laughs> <laughs> like, yo, film this. Like, yeah. that's crazy, right? I'm a nobody, but just do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that shit is crazy. But he did it, and he like, and even even after watching the documentary, I listened to his album, the College Dropout. That shit was. That shit to this day hit. No, legendary. Yeah. Legendary. Kanye got a big part of our like adolescence right oh, there. Yeah. Like he's a, he's a legend for that. Yeah. But yeah, Mac, yo, it's been a great conversation. No, yeah, great conversation. Thanks. It was man. fire. Word. It was fire. This was dope. Yo, just my thoughts. I go by Marcus G. Matt Graham. Matt Graham. Yes. Hope you enjoy. Take care.